uh, complex roots using Dimwall's theorem. So let me first write the Dimwall's theorem once again. If you have watched my previous video, I have shown how to use Dimwall's theorem. Now we're going to use Dimwall's theorem to solve uh, complex equations or equations to get complex roots. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so let me write the Dimwall's theorem. Dimwall's theorem says if z is equal to r says theta, z raised to n, if n is any integer, if, if n is any real number, z raised to n is r raised to n cis n theta. This is Dimwall's theorem. So we're going to use this to uh, uh, solve complex or equations having complex roots. So let me talk about the features of complex roots. So these are two features. If you know the features of complex roots, it helps you to uh, do or solve equations smartly. Features of complex roots. Okay, features of complex roots. There are two main features. Okay, so the first feature that I call is complex roots. Complex roots. Complex roots uh, uh, are always in pairs. Are always in conjugate pair. Are always in conjugate pairs. I'll explain what it means. Conjugate pairs. So what does this mean? I'll give an example. If, okay, if one of the roots, suppose if z1, let me call the first root, if z1 or one root is say uh, 2 plus 3i, if one root is 2 plus 3i, the other root, say let me call that z2, you can say if 2 plus 3i is one of the root, the other root will be 2 minus 3i. This is a theorem called conjugate root theorem. Okay, so I have written this in a different, in a simple manner. Complex roots are always in conjugate pairs. That means if you know one root, you can say the other root would be the conjugate of that. Okay, that's one feature. And secondly, there is a geometry there is a geometry of complex roots or wherever complex roots are involved there is a geometry in complex roots now what do i mean by that there's a geometry in complex roots uh, which implies which means if suppose let me give an example okay uh, say uh, let me write an equation which is a complex equation, say z cube is equal to, say, 8. Now this is, if you write this as an equation, this implies you can say z cube minus 8 is equal to 0. So now we know that as this is a cubic equation, this has to have three roots. Okay, so this implies or yeah, let me write this implies as it's a cubic equation we can say that there are three roots okay that's one thing that you can say the second thing that you can say is the roots would be at an angle of okay so you can say the roots the second thing that i can say is the roots would be at an angle of at an angle of 360 divided by 3. 360 divided by 3 in this particular case. Because there are three roots, the other roots would be at an angle of 360 divided by 3, which is 120 degree. 120 degree. Okay. That means if you generalize this, you can say if there are n roots, let's generalize this. If there are n roots, If there are n roots, the angle between the roots, I'll give I'll explain this in detail when I come to example. 
if there are n roots, the angle between the roots between the roots would be 360 divided by n. So this is a second important result that you can uh, take down. So these are two results. One is the complex roots are always in conjugate pair. And second is if there are n roots, the angle between the roots would be 360 divided by n. So let's solve this equation to start with. So this is an equation with complex roots and we're going to use Dimval's theorem. Okay, so let me write this. Z cube, Z cube minus 8. Sorry, Z cube minus 8 is equal to 0. If suppose this is an equation. So I can say, well, Z cube, Z cube is equal to, Z cube is equal to 8. So let's use Dimval's theorem. So 8, to use Dimval's theorem, the first thing that you need to do is to write this in polar form. So let me draw the axis so that you understand. So 8, if you want to write 8 as a polar form, 8 is a complex number. So the 8 is a number. So this is say your imaginary arm and this is your real arm. So 8 is a real number. So it doesn't have, so let's call this, uh, say this is 8 on the real arm. That means it doesn't have, so 8 can be written as 8 plus 0i. 8 is, can be written, 8 can also be called a complex number where the imaginary part is 0. So I'll write 8 as 8. So 8, if you want to write this as a, in polar form, we can say, well, 8 is at what distance from the, from the origin? It's at a distance of 8. And what angle from the x-axis? So that's 0. So we can say this is 8 cis 0. Okay, so in the polar form, you uh, write two things. One is the radial distance and second is the angle. So let me write z cube is equal to 8 cis 0. Okay, now I want to find, I want to get rid of this 3. What can I do to get rid of this 3? How can I undo that? Okay, so well, I need to raise that by one third. I'm going to raise this by one over three. So you do the same thing to the other side. So this is eight cis zero raised to one third. So this three and three gets cancelled. So we can say z one. Your first root would be using Dimval's theorem. This would be eight raised to one third cis. 0 times 1 third. Okay, so this is z1 is 8 raised to 1 third is cube root of 8, which is 2 cis 0. 2 cis 0 is your first root. Okay, so using this rule, there are how many angles? Now you can say angle between the roots. You can say angle between the roots would be between roots would be 360 divided by 3 because you've got three roots so angle between the roots is 120 degree so your first root is z1 so let me call say z1 is say yeah this is your z1 which is 2 this is z1 which is 2 cis this distance is 2 this distance is 2 at an angle of zero. So this is two cis zero. Your second root, your z2, would be at an angle of 120. So z2 would be two cis, if you add 120 degree, this would be two cis, 120 degree. So your angle, so two cis would be, let me try to draw, so this is here somewhere. Yeah, this distance is 2. This is your z2. So this angle is 120 degree. Okay, rough a rough sketch. And this distance is 2. This is 2. This is also 2. 
And the other angle, if you add 120 to this, so you can also go, if you add 120, that'll be uh, 300, isn't it? Sorry, 240. Okay, so 240 would be uh, 30 less than 270. So yeah, you can also call, this is also, you can call this minus 120. Okay, so this is 90 plus 30. So this is minus 120 or 240 degree. So you can see this is, you add 120 to this. So this is 240 or at the same as saying 2 cis minus 120. Your calculator will give you these answers. So this is 2 cis 0. This is 2 cis 120. This is 2 cis minus 120. So let me show this on a calculator. You can do this on a calculator. The only thing is, I already, okay. So let me go out. So let me go to menu. First go to equations. Okay, first go scroll to equations. Okay, and polynomial. Okay, and let me delete it. Cancel. Okay, so this, if you want to write your a is 1, let me write it. So this is z cube minus 8 equal to 0. So here, yeah, this is equal to 0. So this is same as writing this is z cube plus 0 z squared plus 0 z minus 8 equal to 0. So you have to, this, the coefficient, the a is 1, b is 0, c is 0, and d is minus 8. So under a, you have to enter 1. Under b, you have to enter 0, 0, and negative 8, or minus 8. And what's the answer? Solve. This is 2, which is 2 cis 0. This is 2 cis 120, and this is 2 cis minus 120. Okay, so I would like you to do these questions yourself and check it on your calculator. Say if it is z cube, z cube uh, plus 8 is equal to 0. If you want to solve this, what are the three solutions? Okay, so this is one example. Okay, how would you do z z raised to 4 is equal to 3 my or 3 plus 2i 3 plus 2i the only the first thing that you have to do to use the dimbos theorem is so is to change the number or the expression in polar form and once you get one root you can use this rule this rule to find the other root if you find z1 if you know one root, the other angle would be at an angle of 360 divided by number of roots. Here you can say the angles, there are three roots. And if you know one root, the other root would be at an angle of 120 degree. Here there are four roots. And if you can find one root, the other angle would be at an angle of 360 divided by 4, which is 90 degree.